there's no better feeling than finding that breakout player that helps you win a championship in fantasy baseball. What if you could have a whole team of them? Look, they may not all hit, but I'm gonna give you my all breakout team, a player in every position that I think could have a huge season. If you can't wait for draft season, guess what? You don't have to. Join Underdog Fantasy and you can draft right now for MLB Best Ball for the 2024 season. They've got some new contests that just opened up. Check them out right now. If you sign up and use promo code ENDGAME, you get a 100% deposit match for your first $100 that you put into your account. Try Underdog Fantasy today. Now we're going to go around the horn, but I'm actually going to start in the outfield. I don't want to bury the lead here. Let's start with a guy who jumped up to the number one position at a lot of people's prospects list, Wyatt Langford. And now we see why. At this point in spring training, hitting 346 with four home runs and nine RBIs. Both he and Evan Carter look like they're ready to break out. But we saw Carter a little bit at the end of last season, even in the postseason. Langford obviously has the higher pedigree and stature in terms of rankings, for whatever that's worth. But we haven't seen him yet in the majors. I think we're going to see him in the starting lineup for the rest of the season. As if he hasn't done enough already to convince the Rangers that he is ready to be an everyday player. Also, might matter that Corey Seager, Josh Young, Nate Lowe, all starting the season potentially hurt. Whether he's a DH or in the outfield, doesn't really matter. Langford will be part of this still potent Rangers lineup, and he's got higher upside than pretty much anybody I'm going to talk about. But let's get to another super talented prospect from a year ago that is mashing also in the spring. That's Henry Davis of the Pirates. According to social media, I could just say he went to driveline and leave it at that. But let's dig a little deeper. Even though he was a catching prospect, for the Pirates. He may not be behind the plate too often. He's technically the catcher number two behind Yasmani Grandal for some reason, but whatever. It doesn't matter. He's going to play right field. He's going to DH. He's going to be in the lineup, and he's going to be in the heart of that lineup for the most part. He did hit for power last year throughout the second half, but he struck out quite a bit. The average did sink as the year went on. It's way too soon to just slap the slugger label on him and call it a day. Look, yeah, the power is definitely going to be his calling card. Not so much the defense. Maybe he's not going to be a 300 hitter, but he can definitely do better than what he showed in just his first go through of the majors. The only real concern here with Davis is the fact that he's a pirate and sure, he may not get as many RBI opportunities if he were somewhere else. But I can see that average getting up to the two 70 range with the power to potentially get you 30 plus home runs and if he's catcher eligible still assuming he gets enough experience behind the plate this year that's just a huge bonus and one more outfielder that i really like in a lineup that isn't going to be too exciting at first but i still like the tigers offensive potential so parker meadows leading off definitely intrigues me right now he's slated to be the top of that order against right-handed hitters but what's interesting is that when they do have a left-hander on the mound right now roster resource and mlb playing time project parker meadows to still stay in the lineup He'll just move down toward the bottom of the order, but he won't sit necessarily against lefties. Might be Kerry Carpenter who gets left out. Leading off, that's going to definitely boost his run total. This guy could get you 20 plus home runs, get you some steals as well, and he will hit for average. All right, now getting to the infield. Let's start at first base. Don't forget about Vinny P. Vinny Pascatino was on breakout list last year, had a season cut short. Easy to forget about him being in Kansas City. But look, if you squint hard enough at the top of that order, you can see a pretty good offense potentially developing. Of course, Bobby Witt Jr. there, Sal Perez holding down the cleanup spot. I really like Michael Garcia potentially as the table setter. And if Vinny Pasquitino lives up to promise, you could see him maybe getting 80 plus RBIs. He is going to be a little more valuable in a points league because he doesn't strike out that much. He walks pretty much as much as he strikes out. He's got a 60 grade hit tool, so he can help you in terms of getting your batting average up to par. And he can also be more valuable, like I said, if it's not our traditional Roto League. But I think there is still enough power in there that he's not gonna be a liability. Now, we could realistically fill this entire team with Orioles, but Let's stick with one, the main one. At second base, I think it's safe to say Jackson Holiday 
will get a shot to be the second baseman. I don't think there's going to be any doubt about his major league readiness, despite how young he is. He just went for a grand slam against a left-handed pitcher, no less. He's got five extra base hits already in the spring, hitting 286. He's ready. Playing time will still be in question because, again, at any point, if any of these young players for Baltimore struggle, they have somebody else to replace him. It's that simple. And you could see them saying, let's take a little bit more time with Holiday if he scuffles at first. It just doesn't seem like he will. And then technically, we're at third base here. Is Michael Bush going to play third? Is he going to play first base or just be a DH? Does it really matter? In most fantasy leagues right now, he qualifies as a third baseman, and he might add first base at some point. Maybe he's a utility only, but either way, get this bat in your lineup. Look, he's been ready. The Dodgers just didn't have room for him. Thankfully, a trade happened, and so he's going to be pretty much an everyday player for the Cubs. At the very least, he'll always be in there against right-handers. He absolutely matched last year Triple A with 27 home runs and 90 RBIs. He's got major power. He's going to help that Cubs lineup. And then another way too obvious pick. I don't think we can say that O'Neill Cruz has fully broken out yet because we haven't seen him over a full season. So I'm putting him as my shortstop. Barely even played a year ago because of injury. He's back and he's already showing exactly why we were so excited about him last year. He's got a total of 98 games on his major league resume, but he's already registered some of the hardest hit balls. I mean, this guy's basically a left-handed version of Aaron Judge, who can also steal bases and play shortstop. Uh, If you told me right now that he's going to stay healthy for the majority of the season, I think 30-20 seems like his floor. And then we do need a catcher on this squad. There's actually several intriguing choices. Bo Naylor and Logan O'Hoppy are good late picks but I'm gonna look at Luis Camposano of the Padres. He's been ready to take this job for years, just for some reason been blocked by guys like Austin Hedges, Austin Nola in San Diego. Last year in 163 at bats with the big club, he hit 319 with seven home runs. The hit tool is not a question with Camposano. He finally is gonna have primary backstop duties over a full season probably only sharing a little bit of time with their backup, Kyle Higashoka, who's really just a defensive catcher. I can see Camposano hitting well over 300 and getting you 25 home runs. And while the bottom of the Padres lineup is still very iffy, this actually works to his advantage because he's probably batting sixth right now behind some still talented players. And then we need a pitcher, at least one. I mean, I could go through a list. There's so many candidates here. Let's just pick one guy that I really haven't talked about at all this draft season. Brandon Fott. Fott was a big prospect coming up through the Diamondback system, was lights out in the minors, and it was terrible last year. 5.72 ERA, 1.41 whip, subpar strikeout numbers. I'll admit when he got called up, I added him in several leagues, was excited to see what he can do, and he hurt my teams. But the D-backs stuck with him, and then you see why, because in the postseason, he showed what he's capable of. Over 22 innings throughout the postseason in Arizona's run, he posted a 3.27 ERA, a 1.09 whip, 26 strikeouts to only five walks. Now, if he can do that against playoff teams, imagine he could probably put up numbers similar to that over a full season. This is a case where you almost have to throw last year's regular season stats out the window. With all these players, we have either little or no major league stats to fall back on and say, we know for sure they're going to be studs, but it's all about projecting forward. The skills are there, the opportunity is there, and all of these players definitely have the potential to lead your fantasy team to victory. Those are some young players you should be jumping all over in your fantasy drafts, but I've also got some names of veteran players that are going way too late in your drafts. These are some undervalued hitters you shouldn't forget about. 